Hello human beings, as some of you guys already know, I am currently in Boston, Massachusetts. As I have my brother who already lives here, he's gonna be helping me give you guys a little bit of a perspective on what it's like to live in this city and we're just gonna be showing you guys cool spots around here. I'm super excited to bring you guys along with me and actually, as we speak, I am currently on the campus of Harvard University. Boston is the home of Harvard University. Later on in this video, you'll be able to see a little bit more of the campus. Let's just get right on into it. Hey guys. We're out here at my school. I go to Northeastern in Boston. And it's obviously like really just, everything's closed because of Corona, but we are just walking around. I'm trying to show her certain parts of the school that are still open. A lot of the buildings, like you said, are closed, but it's very, very cool to see where you spend like all of your time. Pretty much, yeah. So we're gonna keep seeing the campus. It's hot? Oh, I was waiting for it to be refreshing. Oh, it's steamy. Oh, it's so bad. Oh, it's steamy. Okay, let's get out of here. Yeah. We made it here. We're at a fruit market today. Should we get fruit first or food? Let's get fruit first. Let's do this. What are we trying to get? Let's cop some bananas. This is a Union Oyster House. I've been here a long time ago. It's like mad old. It's from 1826. It's one of the first like places to eat that were established here. So cool. And this whole little road is just adorable. Yeah, it's cool. Look at it. It's all the flags and everything. Let him go. I'm just like happy you appreciate this stuff too. It's so beautiful. Like, a lot of people don't know. people today we are going to be seeing the more historical side of boston i guess you could say i've seen a lot of the i would assume newer parts of the city but today nathan's taking me to go specifically see bunker hill the bunker hill monument it's a site of a battle between the english and the colonials when this colony was in its young ages you can see a little piece of bunker hill from here it's right there. We're here just right next to the monument and the neighborhood around here is so pretty. Um, we obviously just got here so we haven't seen like the actual thing. So we're about to go do that. It looks like the Washington Monument, but obviously it's not because we're in Boston. That's too much effort, bro. Really out here lifting five ton blocks in 1837. Yeah, what? I wonder if anyone died. When they were Wait, building. this was 1830? And then it took him seven years just to get to yeah, this. Yeah, yes. I mean, imagine. Probably takes like a day to move one. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> a lot of dedication. I know. On June 17, 1775, New England soldiers faced the British Army for the first time in a pitched battle. 
popularly known as the Battle of Bunker Hill. Bloody fighting took place throughout a hilly landscape of fenced pastures that were situated across the Charles River from Boston. Though the British forces claimed the field, the casualties inflicted by the provincial soldiers from Massachusetts, Connecticut, and New Hampshire were staggering. Of the some 2,400 British soldiers and Marines engaged, some 1,000 were wounded or killed. It's crazy how calm it seems right now, despite the fact that all craziness broke loose here. Do you believe that when when things happen in a certain area or in like a certain country, you can like feel the energy or the vibe? I mean, obviously right now it feels very calm here, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's like a... Uh you know, like accounts of like paranormal activity here. Oh, Just cause, I mean, it sounds whack to say. But there's like a lot of people died here violently, so. 1783, America had won her independence, but still had to fight to defend her hard earned freedoms. So there's this huge thing called the Freedom Trail. It's apparently three miles long. Right now we are here at the Bunker Hill Monument. Bunker? Yeah, this is the center of the city. Okay. It's Haymarket, and right here, there's a little street where I go for the fruit market. So yeah, the station's called Haymarket, but it's because here, when horses were still a thing for transportation, people would like stop and feed their horses hay here, but not the fruit market. <laughs> Now we are currently in Charlestown Training Field. I wanted to tell you guys something about this statue that is over there. A lot of other war memorials that were created by sculptors are pretty much inspired by this very statue. It was the first one of its kind. It's right there in the center of the park. How is Boston different or like what is the general vibe of Boston? compared to other cities you've lived in. What I like about Boston, like the vibe, is the fact that there's like a lot of students here. So there's a lot of people to meet. Because there's so many colleges here. And also it's like a big city, but it's not congested like New York. Public transportation's pretty good. Do you feel like it's quite liberal here? Oh yeah, like it's, they're always a democratic state when it comes to the elections and stuff. Yeah. Do you feel that throughout the city? Yeah, I feel like most people are generally accepting of like, you know, like LGBTQ, like people tend not to, at least in my experience, I can speak to everyone's experience, of course, but people tend not to be conservative, as conservative as I've seen in other places. A lot of startups here, a lot of young companies, it's like a fresh vibe. What I also really like about here is it's very easy to reach parts of the country that are more rural and there's a lot of nature nearby. So you can like go in a car, drive like an hour, see a mountain. We are currently on a road trip, a little mini road trip. We went from Boston to New Hampshire, New Hampshire? Anyways, we had to stop and pee. We've been driving for like two hours and we found this really pretty field full of yellow flowers. And I just finished doing my business. So we're gonna keep driving and the others are waiting for me in the cars. I think they found an animal over there. I'm gonna go check it out. You look like a guy, you could treat me right. Take a chance, we live me right. Way, oh, way, oh, oh. I could be the best thing in your life. Way, oh, way, oh, oh. You got me singing. Way, oh, way, oh, oh. You look like a guy, you could treat me right. Way, oh, way, oh, oh. Boy, take a chance, we live me right. Way, oh, way, oh, oh. I could be the best thing in your life. Way, oh, way, oh, oh. Maybe let's take a drive, take a drive. What does it say here? School Street Boston, site of the oldest public school in the United States, founded in 1635. These are alumni, like presidents, like Samuel Adams, John Hancock. So the Boston Public Latin School was the first school ever built in America. And it's actually here. My brother Nathan is about to tell you what it's been converted into. What has this been converted to, Nathan? So we're standing in front of a nice steakhouse called Ruth. Chris, this shit's supposed to be not expensive. You know, like for me, it's just so upsetting 
that a company with enough money can buy like a piece of history essentially yeah this is such and turn an it important into, piece turn it history. into like a place where profit is made like i don't understand how that's possible you know it's just like the peak of capitalism that's where we are so first it used to be the first public school and then it was actually the old city hall and now it is um, the steakhouse so thanks america for conserving our history i love that hi guys it is a new day here in boston and as many of you guys probably already know boston as i was saying as many of you guys already know boston massachusetts is the home of harvard university and that is actually where i am right now right now i'm at a place called harvard yard if you guys ever wondered what harvard university actually looks like i guess i can show you guys a little sneak peek of that today The Harry Elkins Widener Memorial Library. That is huge. Buildings, obviously we cannot go inside because everything's closed, but I looked into one of the buildings and I see this huge bookshelf full of these really, really old books in the architecture building just behind me there. They obviously have to have amazing resources for their students to be able to obtain the amount of knowledge that they are able to obtain during their degree here. and. It's just really cool to think that people have passed down years and years and generations of knowledge within these buildings. And I am kind of also feeling those vibes as I walk through um, the campus. I'm super happy that I took the time to come out here and just see the space. 